What's up everyone, Matthew Monis here, and today we're comparing some of the best budget gaming laptops that retail for around eight to nine hundred dollars. Now I just want to say the Dell 7567 and the Asus GL553 is not included in this video because I couldn't get my hands on them. But I do promise to put out an updated video down the road once I manage to snag them. With that being said, I'm putting the HP Omen 15, the Lenovo Legion Y520, and the Acer VX15 up against one another to find out which one is the best affordable gaming laptop for you. Okay, so all of these laptops are made out of plastic. The Acer VX15 stands out the most due to the red and black design. The HP Omen sits somewhere in the middle and the Lenovo Y520 has a sleek black look that could pass for a non-gaming laptop. In terms of portability, the Acer VX15 is the biggest and weighs the most at 5.51 pounds. The Legion Y520 and HP Omen 15 are fairly close in size, but the Omen 15 has a smaller footprint weighing in at 4.85 pounds. Port selection is pretty equal between all three laptops. You'll get three USB ports, one SD card reader, an HDMI port, audio jacks, and an ethernet port. However, the Y520 and the Acer have one USB Type-C port, while the Omen 15 has none. The Acer VX15 is the cheapest out of the bunch at $799. That will net you an i5-7300HQ processor, 8GB of RAM, a GTX 1050, and a 256GB SSD. The HP Omen 15 starts at $850, but you get a faster i7-7700HQ processor, and instead of an SSD, you get a 7200RPM 1TB hard drive. Just like the VX15, the Y520 starts with an i5-7300HQ, but instead of an SSD, you get a 5400RPM 1TB hard drive, but you also get the faster GTX 1050Ti. Now, upgradability is even between all laptops. They can all have their 2.5-inch hard drives swapped out, the RAM is upgradable, and they all have a single M2 slot for an SSD drive. Now, the Acer can only be configured with one SSD, but you can buy a kit to add your own 2.5 inch hard drive, while the other two options have the option to be bought with two storage drives. The HP Omen had the faster main NVMe drive, averaging read speeds of 3200 and write speeds of 1500 megabytes a second, compared to the write speeds of 2800 and read speeds of 850 on the Y520. Now, if you want a good display on a budget laptop, you need to shell out an extra 90 bucks for the HP HP Omen's 4K panel. It had the best colors, brightness, and highest sRGB rating of 98%. It's more than color accurate enough to edit video or do photography work. However, if you opt for the full HD model, the story sort of changes. Now, I didn't get to test the full HD version of the Omen 15, but apparently it has the worst color accuracy out of these three laptops. The VX15 had the best colors with an sRGB rating of 65%, followed by the Lenovo Y520 at 63. Now, all three of these laptops have a 60 hurt display. No matter which one you choose, you'll get a full-size keyboard with a numeric keypad, but the Y520 has the best one. It's well laid out with Lenovo's signature U-shaped keys. They have this nice rubber mechanical feel to it with a good travel distance of 1.7 millimeters. The Acer is not bad, it's my second pick, it had a good travel distance of 1.6, but I wasn't a fan of the placement of the arrow keys. The HP Omen was my least favorite, it's not terrible or anything, but the travel distance I found to be a bit too short at 1.2 millimeters and the arrow keys much too small. All laptops have one level of backlighting except for the Y520, it has three. The touch pads are made out of plastic but the best one goes to the Acer VX15. I found it to be the most accurate with a good amount of feedback. Coming in a close second was the HP Omen. It looks the best out of the three. It doesn't have that tacky red border, but I still found the Acer to be a bit more responsive. Last was the Y520. The touchpad itself was just as good as the other two, but it was the buttons that completely turned me off. They're separate from the touchpad and slant downwards, making it awkward to use. You really have to make sure your fingers hit the sides and not the middle in order for your clicks to register. Now, sound is obviously subjective, but the Lenovo Y520 and Acer VX15 reached similar volumes. The Y520 had forward-facing speakers, so the sound was directly hitting you. The highs were nice and clean, but the bass was lacking. The Acer VX15 speakers were facing downwards, but in the front, so it was a bit more tinny, not as nice highs, but it had the better bass. As for the HP Omen 15, the sound wasn't that great at all. It didn't get too loud and it was distorted at higher volumes. Now it's quite possible that my unit has faulty speakers. 
So performance, the Acer VX15 has a GTX 1050 inside while the other two have the faster 1050 Ti. My suggestion is if you can, get the 1050 Ti regardless of whatever laptop you decide on. You'll get a solid three years of use before needing to upgrade. It's only $50 more and you get a 15 to 20% performance increase when gaming over the regular 1050. So to give you an idea, an Overwatch at 1080p with the settings set to ultra, I was averaging frame rates of 75 with the Y520's 1050 Ti. Whereas the 1050 and the Acer VX15, I was only getting about 50 frames per second. Now if you do lower it from ultra to high, you can push your FPS up to 60. Doom at high settings running the Vulkan API average frame rates of 75 using the 1050 Ti and 60 frames per second using the 1050. I wish more games used Vulkan, it runs so much better. And last was Battlefield 1. At high settings, the 1050 Ti averaged 65 frames per second, while the 1050 could only get up to 40. For BF1, you'll want to keep the settings at medium or lower if your laptop is using the GTX 1050. So for heat, the HP Omen 15 did the best, but not by much at average temperatures of 39 degrees while the Acer VX15 hit 40. The Lenovo Y520 did get the hottest running temps of 44 and there was one or two instances of thermal throttling. Now I wouldn't be too worried about this, I didn't get any throttling while I was gaming or editing video. Fan noise was fine on all three laptops, under idle you really couldn't hear much but on full load they were all pretty comparable. They weren't loud enough to be overbearing but loud enough that you do notice the fans spinning. And finally, battery life. And this goes to the Acer VX15. It has a 53 watt hour battery and I was able to get around six to seven hours of use before needing a charge. Second goes to the HP Omen 15. Even though it has the biggest battery at 63 watt hours, it uses a 4K screen, so it's averaging closer to six hours. Last was the Lenovo Y520. It had a smaller 45 watt hour battery. I was getting around five to 5.5 hours. Gaming on any of these laptops while not plugged in and resulted in two hours of use before needing a charge. All right, so here's my closing thoughts. All three of these laptops are not meant to be the best gaming laptops you can buy. They're meant to be good and affordable enough to get you gaming comfortably at 1080p. They also happen to be small enough that you can take them to school or travel with them. Now, the big question, which one should you buy? Well, first and foremost, if your budget allows it, get any of these laptops with a 1050 Ti. The price to performance gain is absolutely worth it. Second, if you're a content creator who loves to game, get the HP Omen 15 with the UHD display. It's the lightest and has the most color accurate screen. However, However, if that's not in your budget and you want more of a balance, get the Acer VX15. It had a good keyboard, good trackpad, better full HD display, and it's fairly portable and it has good sound. Finally, if you want the best bang for your buck, get the Lenovo Legion Y520. Its pricing starts with a 1050 Ti and you can always swap out or upgrade the components. The bottom line is you can't go wrong with any of these. The trade-offs between all of them, except for the display, are very small in comparison. Now, for me personally, the Omen 15 makes the most sense since I game and create content, so paying extra for the UHD display is totally worth it. So that wraps up my comparison between all three of these laptops. I want to know what you guys think of them in the comments below. If you have one of these, let me know what you like or dislike about it, or if you're about to buy one of them, let me know which one you're going with and why. Thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And as always, I will see you in the next video.